Good morning. Hi there, I'm Natasha. For me, it is morning, and this is Always Be Crafting. It is currently March. It is the last day of March. It is Sunday, March 31st, and I think everywhere, or almost everywhere, that celebrates, it is Easter. It is Easter Sunday. Now, usually on Sunday mornings, I teach, but the nice thing about it being Easter Sunday is I have the day off. And um, I even had Friday off, and I had half of Thursday off, so I've actually had like three and a half days of no um, outside work, so I've been able to really focus on things at home and on my craft space, and I've used that time as efficiently as I possibly could. Partially, I've been resting because I've spent most of the month of March sick. I've had back-to-back -back sinus infections. I just could not kick whatever the gunk was in my my poor little teeny tiny sinus cavity. I have this small little nose, and inside this small little nose is a very small little sinus cavity, and um, stuff gets in, and it doesn't come out, and it gets infected. I know, gross, right? Anyways, um, I'm seeing my ENT on Tuesday. I know you were very worried. And hopefully, hopefully we'll come up with another solution. Um, about eight years ago, I had a procedure. I think it's called balloon plasty, but I might be getting the name wrong. But basically, they put a balloon up your nose, and they inflate it and they break all the cartilage. I know it sounds so gross. But um, cartilage grows back, you know, over time. And I just have too much cartilage in my sinus cavity. So it's not surgery, which is awesome because there's no knives involved. They're just cracking cartilage to make the tubes inside my sinus cavity, if you will, um, have the ability to for things to flow more easily. So I might be getting that procedure done again because, like I said, cartilage grows back. And I had that procedure done about eight years ago. So... We will talk on Tuesday and see if it's time to do that procedure again. I don't really want to take on more medications. I feel like I feel like the last three years of my life, I went from being someone who took like zero medications to someone who takes way too many medications. And I know that's part of getting older. And I haven't exactly lived the healthiest lifestyle. I definitely haven't had the healthiest eating habits, partially because... I live in a country that doesn't have the healthiest food, but also um, because of stress. Honestly, like really stress is the number one contributor to my downfall personally. And um, being a mother is wonderful. Being a parent is wonderful. But it's um, being a parent with children with medical conditions is very stressful and I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs, I don't gamble. Um, I probably shop too much, but really my vice has been uh, food filled with preservatives and overly processed sugars, and it's a very slow way to kill yourself, I guess. And um, yeah, that was sort of how I coped with a lot of stress, and I've especially after having to go on to so many medications because now I have high cholesterol and I'm hypertensive and I have way too much fluid and I haven't been able to lose weight. I have about, I gained about a hundred pounds and that's a lot. That's like a whole other person. So, um, it's been really, it's been really challenging and I'm 48. I'm almost 49 and I'm in perimenopause. So the hormones are all over the place. So, Gosh, this is not what you tuned in for, is it? This is a lot of information. I'm four minutes in and already talking about way too much personal information. But um, yeah, that's who I am. And this is what this is kind of what you get a little bit. But I did actually turn on the camera to talk about crafting and how I used my my free time. Yes, I rested. I had time off from work. So yes, I rested. And um <clears throat> even though I don't <clears throat> If you've watched any of my videos before, thank you for returning. If you're new here, welcome. I promise it gets better. I hope, I think, maybe. Um, but um, my voice is not 100% back. 
and I am a music teacher. So you can imagine the kids are so forgiving and um, I'm very lucky that teaching preschool music, the kids are really non-judgmental. They're just excited to be making music. It's not like American Idol where everyone's judging, you know, and I, and I feel like, I feel like that's what we have to get back to. This isn't the X factor. You know, we have to get back to that place where we all are music makers, not just music consumers. And, um, Yes, and I, that's part of my mission in life is to be a maker, a music maker, and a craft maker, a quilt maker, a clothing maker. Started making clothes this year. So, uh, or I guess 2023. It's been less than a year that I've started making clothes. Let's talk about the things I have been making. And I want to show you some of the things I've made in the March, the month of March. I have one thing that I didn't get to show. I don't think I got to show it last month, but it is actually a February make. So I'm going to start with that. Oh, I didn't show off the cleaning I did. I was going to show it off and then distracted brain. But do you see my shelves? If you've never been here, you have no idea. But these shelves right here behind me, way more organized. Now, I have been folding fabric onto these cards. These are cardboard for comic books. Now, a lot of people use um, foam core to wrap their fabric around. It's a little thicker, but the nice thing about using foam core is that you can stick a pin into it. I don't do that because I don't have extra space. I need something sturdy but thin, and that's what these cards do for me. And again, these are, you can buy them wherever you can, you know, the big A, if you will. I got them on the big A, and I think I got... 200 this time because I got 100 last time and I flew through them really quick. I have a very large fabric stash. Yes, I buy fabric, but I also inherited my mom's fabric collection. And I'm sure individual pieces of fabric are well over, probably well over 5,000. And I know that's that doesn't seem possible, but my mom was an avid, avid, avid quilter and clothing maker for decades. And... I inherited probably, I think my dad traveled cross country. My mom died on the other side of the country from where I live currently. And my dad brought a trailer full, like, you know, like U-Haul trailer. He purchased a trailer, filled it with fabric and drove it cross country and left it in my driveway. So it wasn't like a U-Haul that he had to return. You know, this was like a purchased, you now own a trailer full almost exclusively of fabric. I think there were three sewing machines in there as well. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a lot. And my mom passed away. It'll be 15 years next month. Um, well, I know we're going into April, but in May. So we're like five weeks out from when my mom passed away almost 15 years ago now. And I inherited so much fabric and I have used some of the fabric I inherited from her, but there's still so much. We actually, um, ended up selling the trailer <laughs> and in its place, we built a shed and maybe someday I will do a little shed tour. And, uh, we have about, I think it's about 20 boxes now, like big, um, clear boxes, you know, like those 30 gallon boxes full of fabric and it's, it's a lot to go through and I've gone through much of it and I've pulled stuff out, but I can't bring all of that into the house. It's too much, but I have brought a lot of stuff into the house and I've tried to organize it. So mixed in with the stuff that I've purchased on my own, because I also love fabric, um, to organize it, things that are big pieces, like Usually I, I only do a yard or bigger folded up on these cards, but there are a few pieces that are like half yard cut um, because maybe they're part of a certain fabric collection and it's easier to keep them together. But these things have been really, really helpful. Um, before all my fabric, and half of it still is, more than half of it still is, piled. Fabric is just piled because that's what my mom did. My mom had those big giant shelves and all of her fabric was just piled on top of each other. And I know a lot of people still do the piling. Um, this is considered filing. File, don't pile. And I get it. I get it. I really do. It's like going into a fabric store. It's easier to see what you have if it's filed. Um, so I had these bookshelves already. And so it made sense that I would 
utilize them, especially for fabrics that I love to use and they make me happy. And most of the fabric that you see is the fabric that I have purchased because those are the things that, you know, really spark joy. Um, so yeah, so that's what that's, that is. And that's one of the, um, projects that I've done since being sick and now having time off and recovering. And again, I've been blabbing for like 10 minutes already. All right, so let's show some makes because it's the end of the month and let's talk about things that have been made. So the first bag I'm going to show you is actually from February, but I don't think I got to show it to you before. Uh, a friend of mine reached out and she asked me to make a bag for her to give to another friend. And her request was blues and yellows and maybe something seaside. Well, I love that inspiration and... I went with it and I actually made two bags because I couldn't decide and I gave them to her in February and I said choose whichever one you think your friend will like the best and then give me back the other one. They're both beautiful and she had she had them in her hands for probably a week because she even had a hard time deciding but ultimately this is the one she gave back but I still think it's a gorgeous bag and da -da -da, here we go. So a strap that you can do like an over the shoulder it's an adjustable strap here this is an adjustable and you can um unclip that if you don't want the adjustable if you just want a tote here it is do you see how how pretty is that blue oh my gosh so i know this doesn't read like specifically seaside but i thought this looked like waves and so blues and yellows and it's beautiful flowers at the bottom that i just love and inside the pocket, there were more flowers. Just a nice, like, blue and white. Isn't that pretty? So I thought this was really pretty. She thought it was really pretty. But again, she chose the other the other bag. Um, and it was really pretty. If I have a picture of it, I'll try to add it. But I don't think I showed that off in the month of February. And now I think I'm going to put this on my Etsy site I'm really bad at loading things onto my Etsy site, but I think I will load this because I think it's a cute bag and it should go find a good home, right? It should find a good home. I'm proud of it. I love it. I love it. I think it's pretty. All right, so that was made technically in February. Let's move on to March. Oh, I should also point out that um, blue bottom, that dark blue bottom. Um, I'm in a surprise vinyl club, or I was a participant in a three month surprise vinyl club. And now that that's ended, um, cause it was January, February, March, the January surprise vinyl was this gorgeous, bright blue vinyl. So that brings me to the February surprise vinyl. And all right, I'm gonna show you the side first cause that's the surprise vinyl. Isn't that so pretty? I can show that off cause the February is passed. Now you wanna see what I did with it? Ba bam Look at that. Da da. Do you see the snake? All right, look. Are you ready? Ba bam More snake. Ha ha. So, um this bag, the pattern is that one was just a tote, but I used specifically Did I use the Santorini? I may have used the Santorini measurements. There's a million tote bags out there. And um, one tote bag is called the Santorini tote. And every tote bag has similar, like, there's a million ways to make a tote, but some totes are, you know, based on like the specific sizes, if you will. And I think I used the specific sizes of the Santorini and that blue one. Anyways, this is by the same designer as the Santorini tote, which is So Hungry Hippie. Um, and this is called the Andy bag. So it's got a crossbody strap and it's got a recessed zipper. And on the inside, so this fabric is, so this snake fabric, this is Tula Pink. This was, I think she calls it, it's not soft vinyl. It's, oh gosh, what's it called? Vegan leather or faux leather, soft faux. It's not soft leather. It's not soft vinyl because that was basically what the dark blue was, was soft vinyl. There's some smooth, maybe smooth vinyl, smooth faux leather. Anyways, on the inside, 
and you can get that at So Hungry Hippie. On the inside, I used more Tula Pink. Um, this was from Moon Glow Collection. Those are the dragonflies. You can see. And the snake pattern and the dragonflies are both from the same collection. And I used more of that purple on the inside pocket there because I had it, so why not? Um, what did I use on the inside here? Did I use something fun? Oh yeah, I used more snake stuff. But then this I had, that was just nothing. It was just purple. Didn't really care as much on the inside of this. Did, it wasn't going to show as much. Um, the tag, the Stay Wild, this was from Heartwood and Hyde. I just thought that fit really nicely. Zippers, I think, are either So Hungry Hippie. I think they're So Hungry Hippie zippers. I'm like 99% sure those are So Hungry Hippie zippers. And same with the hardware. I believe it's So Hungry Hippie hardware. Um, What else can I tell you about the bag? That was it, it was a fun make. It was with the Surprise Vinyl Club, you get a pattern. Um, and so you get a pattern with, gosh, is the pattern free or maybe you just get a discount on the pattern? I can't remember. Look it up if you want to join the Surprise Vinyl Club. I think the next one starts in May. I think they take the month of April off, if I remember correctly. They run for three months at a time, so you're only committed for the three months. Um, so if you're interested, So Hungry Hippie Surprise Vinyl Club, look it up. And it was a lot of fun. It was the first time I've ever participated in it. I'm glad I did. The January pattern was called the Ruby pattern. And I finished the pa I finished the bag for that. I didn't use the surprise vinyl from that, that dark blue on the Ruby bag. I decided to mix it up with some cork, which actually the cork is also from So Hungry Hippie. And some Sherpa. I think the Sherpa actually is from Joann's. And it's a nice pattern. It's got like this rounded top. Um, and this fun ice creams on the inside. I believe that's also Joann fabric that I had in my stash. I was just trying to make something fun. Um, I was making this bag in February. Uh, or I started it. I cut the fabric out in February. So I was very thinking. I guess I had Valentine on the brain. So that's why I went with the pinks. These are pockets. Um, the pattern's really nice. I don't think I chose the best materials um, for the pattern. This is like bottom and top, two pieces uh, sewn together. So it's not a pocket. It's just the look of it. I would definitely use the pattern again. Again, the, it was the Ruby bag from So Hungry Hippie. I would just use different materials. The cork is lovely to work, work with, and I'd use the cork on something else I'd shown last month, a notebook cover. Um, so I liked the cork, the Sherpa wasn't a great choice, but it is fun. It's still fun. It's just, I don't know. I don't think it's really a bag for me, but it's a cute bag. So I should probably, I should probably put it on my Etsy site. Cause someone, someone I'm sure would love using it. Um, even though, even though it's not for me, I'm sure someone would love it. So I should probably put it up on the site so someone could enjoy it. All right. So that's another thing I finished in the month of March. Like I said, I cut the pieces in February but then I just kind of got busy and set them aside. So I finished that in March. Another bag, I had started, okay, so the first panels of this, this is an Easy Does It, it's by Annie Pattern. Here, I'll just show you. Brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? I see my YouTube friends looking at me. Is that cute? I love it, and that's a little pocket. So I had cut out this, brown bear and this goldfish and quilted these pieces years ago, probably like three years ago. And um, then I was going to make an easy does it with them. So they were cut to this spe these specific sizes. And then life happened and I didn't. And they've just sort of been hanging out. And I was making them for some somebody specific. Here's the inside. So the back of the goldfish has blue horse and because brown bear has this pocket here brown bear just has green this is Eric Carl of course who drew brown bear and it's an Eric Carl fabric the green is Eric Carl also um, the rainbow these rainbow stripes were left over from a bag that had been I'd made a backpack about two years ago 
didn't work out. I had taken the bag apart and used and cut it up for pieces, basically. Used the fabric in different places. So I had these um, rainbow strips left. So I'm like, oh, perfect. They'll, they'll go into this bag. So then all I needed, because I had this piece, I had this piece, and I had these pieces. All I needed was a bottom, and so I found a scrap of this black vinyl. And um, it's a bit heavier, but I thought, why not? Found some scraps of felt for the handles, and the person I'm gifting this to is an animal lover, but specifically dogs, so I used a dog paw for the thing. And the reason I'm giving this to someone, so the whole reason this started was she had loaned me her brown bear books like three years ago. Um, if you've been here before, you've heard me talk about some of the classes I teach. So um, on weekends, on Fridays and Saturdays, I teach taught Shabbats. And um, not every Saturday or Friday, because obviously I didn't this weekend. But most Fridays and occasional Saturdays, I teach taught Shabbats. And we try to have like some kind of lesson. Usually it's a lesson about whatever's happening in the Torah that week. But sometimes there's a, a week where maybe the story in the Torah isn't, you know, really applicable to small children. And so you're just looking, okay, what else can we talk about? So one week I was choosing colors and I was like, oh, let's use the brown bear books to talk about. And I could not find my copy, a brown bear. And I put up on Facebook, hey, does anyone have a copy? And she came to the rescue with those giant board books and loaned them to me. And I always said one of these days as a thank you, because she totally saved my butt that day. And she'd say, she'd been a good friend at that time for a long time. She and I sort of drifted. Um, nothing bad, just we're basically just Facebook friends at this point. But um, she's just sort of always been in my heart as someone who is such a giving person. And I've always wanted to, you know, if I ever needed something, she's the kind of person that I know would come and try to rescue me if I needed rescuing. And that's an example. And I had that fabric, so that's why I had cut up. But Brown Bear was, you know, awkward, had to be cut up into like a pocket type piece. And um, things happened and I just never got around to finishing a bag. Maybe I couldn't figure out how I wanted the rest of the bag to look back then. And that's why I got stopped. Um, whatever it was, I can't remember three years ago. Remember I started a bench medications three years ago. Um, but when I, when I came across the pieces, I was like, you know, it's never too late to give a gift. So I finished the bag and um, I'm going to find time over the next week or two and I'm going to find time to drop it off at her house just as a, hey, I've been thinking about you and I wanted to give you something, you know. So I think she'll still appreciate it and I still know where she lives because again, we're still Facebook friends. <laughs> um, what else can I show you that I made? Oh, one bag. I think I'd shown you pieces of this. Again, if you've been here before, I'd been doing a slow along. That is when you're sewing together with a whole bunch of people across the world because really all of us were from all over the world and um we were all doing the same pattern we were all doing a gosh what is it it is it's a duffel bag i had to i found something over there that had the name on it the get out of town duffel it is by by annie and it's a wonderful pattern and I'd been using it, I'd been sewing it together in a group of, of other makers. And um, we'd been doing it slowly, just one little bit at a time. The um, last day to finish it was two weeks ago, three weeks ago, something like that. And um, I finished it on time. Would you like to see it? I really love it. I really love it. Really love it. So because it was a slow along, I added over my strap closure, not so fast, little sloth. I think it's so cute. Again, that was from um, Heartwood and Hyde. Oh, wait, I have another Heartwood and Hyde tag here somewhere. Um, here it is. Because love me my Alice in Wonderland. And it is a little Cheshire cat. I'm not all there myself. I just thought that was very fitting because it's so colorful. And um, if I had shown it, if so you don't have to go back and look, show you the inside is Paris. Whole bunch of pictures from Paris, like the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, the Arc de Triomphe. 
Sacre Coeur, Notre Dame, a whole bunch of good stuff in there. And um, it was a great bag. I finished it in time that when I took my son back to college after spring break, I drove him back up to his college. It was about five hours away. I packed myself this bag as an overnight bag, filled it with all my goodies that I needed to have in the hotel, and it was perfect. Oh, and look at my fabulous strap. Do you see how glittery that is? I love it. And the strap is, um, a couple of people sell it. I can't remember if I specifically got it from So Hungry Hippie. I know So Hungry Hippie does sell it, but I believe, at least for a time, my friend Tava over at Cali Quilt Co. was also selling this strapping. So um, I would check out both places. So Hungry Hippie and Cali Quilt, Co. Cali Quilt Co. I think would check. It is one and a quarter inch. So it's a little bit wider and a little bit narrower than the two standard sizes. Two standard sizes are one inch, one and a half inch. And this one's right smack dab in the middle. So hardware is a little trickier, but not impossible. Okay, so don't let that stop you. And of course, a strap pad for it I made. So I love it. So that's another thing I finished in the month of March. So even though that one was started back, I guess I started in January, because again, it was a slow along. We went very slowly. What else? Oh, another thing I can show you. Let me reach. I'm going to show you this inside out to start because it is being, the, I'm on the last step of this bag. I had shown a little while ago um, a waste pack, fanny pack, whatever you want to call, um, that I made for myself. It is, the design is the Louis bag by Uh Oh Creations. And I had made a couple. I made one back, I guess, in August of 23. I'd gotten the pattern as part of my bag making bee club, which is another monthly bag making club that I participate in and I'd always wanted the pattern so I was so excited when the bag making bee club that I was already a part of had the pattern as part of one of their months I believe it was the August month maybe I was so excited because like August was my birthday month it was a pattern I wanted to try anyway so I got the pattern for free and um I really liked the fabric and then I ended up I didn't like the bag I made with the fabric that came with the club it was great but it wasn't like perfect for me. So I ended up being able to sell that bag and the person who bought it ends up loving that bag. But then I was able to use the pattern on another bag that I absolutely love and is my purse like that I wear every day. And then another friend loved it so much. She's like, can you make me exactly the same bag? Cause I love it so much. So I've made like a riff on it, like a slight variation on it for her. Cause she loved it so much. Anyways, fabulous pattern. Totally love it. And Another friend of mine who's like, I need a dog walking bag. Um, where should I go buy one? I'm like, you're asking me where to buy one? Um, hello, I'm going to make you one. So she's like, oh my gosh, you're so nice. She's like, of course I'll pay you. And I'm like, I know her. Of course she was going to pay me. Um, so we talked about what she needed. And I was like, perfect. I have just the material for you. So I already made that bag. Um, if I can, I'll pop up a picture of that bag. And I was showing another one of my besties the bag I was making for this friend. And um, she's like, oh my God, can you make another one that I want to gift to my next door neighbors? So, um, cause like her next door neighbors and she, they're like super tight, super close friends. And um, so I was like, oh yes, cause I have more dog fabrics. I finished one dog fabric. Hopefully I can set, hopefully I'll show you a picture. I hope I have a picture of the dog fabric um, for the bag that I already gave to my friend. Um, and so I showed her the new dog fabric, Tula Pink dog fabric. So I have to finish hand stitching the binding. So the bag's not finished, but I'm going to show you the, because it's inside out. So you can see the dog fabric. Then I'll turn it right side out so you can see the whole bag. And you'll know basically what the other bag looked like that I already gave to my friend. Because it's almost exactly the same. You ready? Is that so cute? So this dog looks very much like my friend's neighbor's dog. So she's like, I have to have that dog. And then, bam. Oh my God. It's so cute. It's just so cute, all the dogs. It's just so cute. Okay, so this is what I have to finish. I have to finish the binding. So I'm just going to unclip that because that's easy. I can, 
I can put clips back on. So I can turn this bag inside out, or actually right side out, because it's currently inside out. And I will show you the rest of the bag. Um, this material that it's made out of is like a, um, it's a type of waterproof canvas. I think it's called Oxford linen or linen Oxford, something like that is what the person that sells it calls this specific kind of waterproof canvas. Um, I think it's beautiful because it does look like linen fabric, but it's got the waterproof capabilities of being a waterproof canvas. And I did some quilting on the front. I really like the, I, there's a couple of waste bags I like, um, but I really like, boom. This is the size small. Look at that. Love is a four legged word. I love it. And I use the gold because again, the dogs, did you see how much gold was around the dogs? Look how beautiful. Okay, so I use the gold zipper gold hardware and then wait there's like a bonus dog inside ready Boop. so stinking cute i can't handle it oh okay so i really i've enjoyed making that so but that's not enough is it no no it's never enough it's never enough um i tighten that weird okay so it's a waist bag with a side buckle and over here so um, the pattern has this little, like, it's a D ring, I guess, usually written in the pattern right there, but I had this little triangle ring. So then you can add a poop bag. So this little poop bag, which I made. Ugh. Look at that. So when they're walking their dog. So that is the itty bitty boxy bag from Oakla Roots. And I have the templates for that. I bought the templates from her. And oh, here you can see the inside. So this is, again, that Oxford. See, it's just totally waterproof. So you can use it without any lining. This bag, you really want a lining. And who wouldn't want those dogs? Because so cute. But um, you can use this um, Oxford linen or linen Oxford, whatever it's called. You can use it without any lining, which I love. And I had tried it. The first bag I had done with that. Oh, I was saying the itty bitty boxy bag. Nice thing about the Oakley Roots pattern. I think you can buy it as like a downloadable PDF, but I bought the templates. I'm not sure if it's a free pattern if you get the downloadable or if it's not free. I have no idea if it's a paid pattern or a free pattern, but I purchased the templates because the templates the acrylic templates that she sells has the marking to for the grommet. So you don't have to like do math, which I love. I just love being able to like put the piece of acrylic on my fabric, cut around it with my rotary cutter, and then do a little circle with, for my grommet. And I just love it. It's so easy. But I'd use that Oxford linen on this pattern, which is... I believe a free pattern. This is by Spencer Og. How cute that is. Um, and it is the Cos Pod. So the cosmetics, cosmetics pod. I believe it's a free pattern. Um, this is a slight change on her on her pattern, only because she doesn't have <coughs> written into the pattern like these little things on the side. So I added those. So I added this. Um, and I had, actually, let's see, look, see, it's just, it's waterproof. Um, she, in her pattern, I think it's a tiny bit narrower. I'd actually, after I printed off the paper template, cause I think you have to print it off on like two pieces of paper, tape them together. So after I did that, I like cut it down the middle and I added like an extra inch of width um, because I wanted it just a little bit wider. I have made this pattern before and it's, it's perfect the way she has it. Don't get me wrong. It's really lovely. And I've made it out of jelly vinyl and I've made it out of clear vinyl. Um, it's a great pattern if, if you don't want to, you know, futz with any kind of lining. It's really easy, very fast. Um, but I just wanted a little bit wider for just holding certain things because, um, like the way, like, see, that's my stiletto. 
see length. And I think that her original size is like exactly the size, like exactly the length of a pen. You know what I mean? And I wanted it just a little bit wider. Does that make sense? So you can go onto her site, Spencer Og. And um, I think this is a free pattern. If it's not, it's got to be like a, a cheaper pattern. But I believe this one, the Cosmetic Pod, P-O-D, Pod, um, is a free one, I believe. All right. So that is everything that I have finished in the month of March. I cannot show you the March um, surprise vinyl because the surprise vinyl for March is um, we're not allowed to show till the 15th of the following month because just to make sure everyone receives their surprise vinyl in time. The pattern for so the So Hungry Hippie Surprise Vinyl Club, it was a really cool pattern, but it's not a pattern. I'm probably not going to use the pattern, the, the March pattern for you. Not free, but the March pattern on the March vinyl. It's cool, but I just don't think I'm going to use it. Um, but I'm looking at the vinyl over there and I've got lots of ideas for it. And um, I'm excited, but I haven't decided what I'm doing exactly because I get lots of ideas. I might end up making another Louis bag. Not sure. Not sure. It might go into a tote bag. Not sure. Um, things that are in process. Oh, I'm making another get out of town bag. So the duffel bag. I'm making another one of those. You want to see the fabric? I haven't cut into it yet, but everything's sitting right here. That's why I have... Uh, okay, I'm going to show you because I'm making this for my niece. Okay, so the inside fabric, I think, is going to be... Aren't those so cute? Okay, um, this is Sarah Watts for Ruby Star Society fabric. And I just... Oh my God, those chickens are just so cute. I can't handle it. But... The outside fabric, which I think she is like, I saw this fabric in the fabric store and I think there were three yards left on the bolt, which is way more fabric than I need to make the bag. But I was just like, I need all three yards because I'm going to make the bag and then I don't know what else I'm going to make. But I'm going to make something because I love that fabric. My niece is going to love that fabric. And then I might need more for me. I might need more for her for something else. I don't know. Are you ready? My niece loves pink and she loves cats. Is that so cute? So again, Sarah Watts for Ruby Star Society. And the chickens are part of the same line, so they match. Can you see that? Oh, I love it so much. And um, so, yeah, I grew up on a farm with lots of cats. There were chickens. And um, she's kind of growing up the same way. Um, cause after my parents passed, my, my brother ended up inheriting our place. So she's building just as many memories where I grew up as I got to, even though she's not growing up there exactly, she's getting to build the memories in that same place. And so to me, it's very special. So I think she'll like it. And she's a freshman in college, just like my son. They're like almost the exact same age and, um, they're getting ready for their first summer off at college. And I don't know what she's got planned, but whatever she may do, I thought a duffel bag might be a nice thing to travel with. And I already made a duffel bag for my son, so I guess she needs one too. The other thing I'm making is the March Bag Making Bee Club. And I'm probably going to give this bag to her because, again, it has pink. and My niece loves pink. Um, and I think it'll be good for her. And I don't need it personally, but it's going to be cool. Um, it's all my pieces are cut. I'm in process. So all I've got so far sewn that I can really show you are the outside covers. Aren't those so cool? I mean, hello. And when I said pink, look at the inside. Bam! Pink! So it's called the Travelnizer. Is it sophisticated craft? Is that who? Is that who did the pattern? Oh gosh. I don't want to get someone in trouble. I don't want to get myself in trouble. Um, yeah, sophisticatedcraft.com. Um, Travelnizer is the pattern. And next up, I'm going to be working on the clear zipper pockets. So I've got the outside pieces done. It's like a four piece, like you zip it up and then it goes boom, 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 boom. And it opens up to like be four pieces long. So pretty cool. And, um, I think 
it'll be perfect again for my niece because it holds a bunch of stuff and it's pink so I think she's gonna love it and then after I make it I think I think it's gonna be a really good show bag because I have another friend whose daughter is about to graduate high school and she does a lot of theater and I think it'll be a really good bag for her so after I finish making it and I know like really how long it takes and I have the process down for this one because this is my first bag obviously because it's bag of the month club and I've been watching the tutorial video and following all the steps um then I think I'm gonna go into my stash with my friend I have so many friends and I never name any of my friends because I don't want anyone I don't want to call anyone out um but I'm gonna go into my stash with her and be like all right let's make something for your daughter because she needs a show bag and she might need something to go off to college because she's leaving next year and so I think I think this might be we've been talking about making a bag for her daughter like all year like she needs a show bag she needs a graduation bag she, like she needs something special and um yeah I think this might be the bag for her I think this might be it um so yeah so that's everything oh I have one more thing that I'm in the process of making if you again if you've been here before I had a quilt in progress I've taken a small break on the 100 modern box 100 modern blocks quilt I've gotten about 10 blocks finished sewing another five blocks cut out all my pa all my fabric is set aside that that pattern is taking a small break because it has to because I've got a lot of stuff going on I love it but it has to take a small break and I finished a quilt top baby quilt and it's very fast it wasn't don't get too impressed yet so this a friend Another theater friend had a baby, and so my husband and I, we love, well, my whole family, my kids, there's a cartoon called Phineas and Ferb on Disney Channel, adorable, and when my kids were really little, like, they were obsessed with Phineas and Ferb, and we loved it, my husband and I, and so we were like, yeah, we can watch this cartoon, like, anytime you want, and, um, like, my kids, when they were five and three, they were Phineas and Ferb for Halloween, really cute Halloween costumes. And um, my husband was Dr. Doofenshmirtz, and then I was Lynn Donna. And if you've seen the cartoon, you totally get it. It was awesome. Um, anyways, we've had lots of like odds and ends things from Phineas and Ferb for years. And they had put out a Perry the Platypus. Again, if you don't know Phineas and Ferb, you're not going to get any of these references. I'm so sorry. But Perry the Platypus, the crime-fighting platypus, um secret agent he was they put out like there was a fabric panel and I guess somewhere around that time this is now my kids are now 15 and 18 soon to be 16 and 19 so 13 14 years ago um they put out this fabric panel and I bought it thinking I was going to make a blanket for I don't know either for both of my kids to share on the couch or for one of them I don't know but life happened <laughs> You know, because life just keeps happening. And um, I never made it. So anyways, this theater friend of mine, she loves Perry the Platypus. She loves Phineas and Ferb. She's just as passionate as we are about this cartoon. And I, my husband found the Perry the Platypus clock. And we're like, um, we we're going through our eBay stuff. And I found that we looked at the Perry the Platypus clock and I'm like, I can't just put Perry the Platypus up on eBay. That just feels sacrilegious. I'm like, oh, you know, so-and-so would really love this clock. And she was pregnant and I'm like, oh, she's going to love this. Let's maybe she'll put it in her nursery or who knows where. So I messaged her. And I'm like, would you like this clock? She's like, oh my God, I would love this clock. And then I was thinking about it. I'm like, you know, she's pregnant. I should make her a baby blanket. But then I don't know, I guess I'm superstitious. So I didn't want to give her like a blanket before she had the baby she had the baby like three weeks ago so now I'm like okay now I can actually make the blanket so um I took the Perry the platypus panel and I just added some fabric around it so and in between the two borders the black and white borders these are cave facet I love cave facet and I just got a jelly roll and I added some ribbons around from my K facet and here's here's Perry can you see Perry the Platypus? Here, so he's double trouble, you know. He's so funny. Anyway, so I just added, because babies love ribbons and babies love black and white. 
So that is the top and the back bad little girl. So not that it really matter because I think the fabric's fabulous. I'm going to use Minky because I love Minky. Or uh, no, I'm yes, it's Minky, but technically it's Cuddle because it's Shannon Fabrics Cuddle, which is like the highest quality of the Minky type fabrics. It is it's better than Minky. It's Cuddle. Um, and I got um, I got a piece of like a cheetah print Cuddle. And it's so fabulous. So I think that's going to be the back. And um, so it's going to be like super soft and cuddly and wonderful and fun. And so, yeah, so I will finish. I will finish my Perry the Platypus baby quilt. And hopefully I'll get that done quickly because, you know, baby's still, like I said, she's like three weeks old. So she's not really spending that much time on the floor yet. Um, but that's going to be coming. They grow so fast. And in like a month and a half, that baby's probably going to be on the floor trying to do tummy time. And she needs something soft to be on the floor with. She's not doing tummy time probably yet. So at least not on the floor probably yet. I don't know. Every parent's different. So I think that's it. I think that's enough. Yeah. So that's everything that's in progress, things that are made and what I'm doing. And today I'm going to go show no okay I'll show you one more thing this is something I bought so you meant I mentioned Oakley Roots the person who had the the dog poop bag <laughs> the 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 itty bitty boxy bag pattern um I really love Jess at Oakley Roots her um her YouTube channel really helped me a lot there's a lot of YouTubers out there that I watch and I'm very passionate about because these are people who are just authentic and they just show up and they kind of laid the groundwork and were role models for me to kind of be out here and be myself. She's just one of them, but I mention her right now because she has a store and she had these water cups and I decided to buy one. So now I guess I'm an official Oakla Rudy, but I have to say this giant water cup, 40 ounces of water, Keeps me hydrated. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hydrate because then I'm going to a movie because it's Easter Sunday and the only things open are movie theaters. So I'm going to go to a movie and give my son some alone time because he's 15 and 15 year olds like to have the alone time. And yeah, maybe I'll do some sewing before I leave. Have a wonderful everything, whatever it may be, whether it's morning or night or winter or summer, whatever season it is for you, whatever time of day it is for you, I wish you all the best. Thank you for spending almost an hour of your life with me. Maybe after editing, it won't be so long, but thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. I hope you subscribe and like, and I don't know, share with your friends if you want to. Leave a comment. Thanks. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.